Hey there! Today, I want to introduce you to this incredibly important mathematical concept called the Hessian matrix. And essentially, what this is, is just a clever way to package all the information about the second derivatives of a function into one nice, compact mathematical structure. So, let's say you have some kind of multivariable function, like the example we'll use, something like e to the x divided by 2, multiplied by sine of y. And what the Hessian matrix is, often denoted with a capital H, is that it's a matrix that contains all the second partial derivatives of your function in a very organized way. The way this works is that each entry in the matrix represents a different second partial derivative, where the first component in the upper left is the partial derivative of f with respect to x taken twice, the upper right is where we differentiate first with respect to x and then with respect to y. The lower left is where we differentiate first with respect to y and then with respect to x. And the bottom right is where we differentiate with respect to y both times. And it shouldn't feel like a surprise that those mixed partial derivative terms, the off-diagonal ones, turn out to be exactly the same for nice functions, because the order of differentiation doesn't matter. So, let's actually compute this for our specific function, the one with e to the x divided by 2 times sine of y. And in order to get all the second partial derivatives, we first need to find the first partial derivatives. The partial derivative of f with respect to x gives us 1 half e to the x divided by 2 sine of y. Because we bring down that 1 half coefficient from the exponential and the partial derivative with respect to y give us e to the power of x divided by 2 cosine of y because the derivative of sine is cosine. Now, when we differentiate this again to get the second derivatives, the upper left component, where we differentiate with respect to x twice, becomes 1 fourth e to the x divided by 2 sine of y, because we bring down another half. The mixed partial derivative, where we differentiate with respect to x first and then with y, or with y first and then with x, gives us 1 half e to the x divided by 2 cosine of y because the derivative of sine becomes cosine. And the lower right term, where we differentiate with respect to y twice, gives us negative e to the x divided by 2 sine of y, because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So this whole matrix of second derivatives is the Hessian, and you can think of it as a matrix valued function that takes in a point and gives you a matrix of numbers. And the really nice thing about writing it like this, in this organized matrix form, is that you can extend this pattern to function with any number of variables. If you had a function with three variables, x, y, and z, you'd get a 3 by 3 matrix following the same pattern, where each entry represents a different combination of second partial derivatives. And if it was a 4 variable function, you'd get a 4 by 4 matrix or a 100 variable function would give you a 100 by 100 matrix, which sounds enormous, but it's a very organized way to store all that information. Now, let me talk about why this is actually super relevant in machine learning. In machine learning, when we are training neural networks, we are trying to minimize a loss function that typically depends on thousands or millions of parameters. So it's a very high dimensional function. And the Hessian matrix would give us information about the curvature of this loss function in all directions, which sounds incredibly valuable because if you knew the curvature, we could make much smarter steps during optimization, taking big steps where the function is flat and small steps where it's curving sharply. And this would theoretically allow us to converge to a minimum much faster than simple gradient descent. But here is the problem. Here is why we almost never actually use the Hessian in modern deep learning. And it comes down to a computational nightmare. For a function with n variables, the Hessian is an n by n matrix. So if you have a network with 1 million parameters, 
the Hessian would be a 1 million by 1 million matrix. And just storing this matrix would require 1 trillion numbers, which is about 4 terabytes of memory. And again, that's just to store it. Computing all those second partial derivatives is also incredibly expensive. Require n squared operation to fill in the matrix. And then if you want to use it in Newton's method, you need to invert the matrix, which takes n cubed operations. And for a million parameters, that's completely infeasible. So what do we do instead? Well, researchers have developed various approximations. One approach is to use only the diagonal of the Hessian, which gives us you some curvature information, but only in the coordinate directions. And this is much cheaper to compute. Another approach is quasi-Newton methods like BFGS and LBFGS that build up an approximation to the Hessian over time using only gradient information. So they get some of the benefits of second order methods without the computational cost. But the full Hessian matrix itself, as beautiful and informative as it is mathematically, remains largely a theoretical tool in the context of modern large-scale machine learning. And that basically wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this explanation helpful, give it a thumbs up, share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe to stay up to date with everything I post on this channel. See you in the next one. Bye bye.